You've probably heard that electric vehicles only have 25 fires per 100,000 vehicles sold, way less than hybrids or gasoline cars. Sounds great, right? Well, what if I told you those numbers, they're completely wrong. I've had this graphic in my presentation for years, and here's the funny thing. When you look at these numbers and how they're presented, they haven't changed since 2018. But I don't use it to show how little EVs catch on fire. I use it to highlight a much bigger issue. We don't have good data. Think about it. Anytime you're looking at a data set, you'd expect those numbers to change year over year, especially with numbers like these. In 2018, there were just under 500,000 electric vehicles on the road in the U.S. Today, we're sitting right around 4 million. That's a huge increase, but still a fraction compared to gas and hybrid vehicles. Breaking it down by fires per 100,000 vehicles, that makes sense. And this graphic, it's been widely shared and attributed to the NTSB, the National Transportation Safety Board. You'll find it in media reports, Google searches, pretty much everywhere. So I decided to reach out to the NTSB to find out the source of this data. Turns out, their spokesperson told me this was misinformation. Honestly, I wasn't surprised. As someone who fills out fire reports, I know we're not tracking this data properly. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the limitations of the current data and the different agencies and studies that are out there on electric vehicle fires, show you where the real gaps are. I'll start with sources in the U.S. and then look at other available studies. The NTSB did make an attempt to study the frequency of electric vehicle fires. They looked at data from multiple sources. NISTA, the Highway Loss Data Institute, the U.S. Fire Administration, the National Fire Protection Association, and even the Towing Traffic Incident Reporting System. But here's the thing. After all that research, the study was ultimately inconclusive. Why? Because the data just isn't there. These organizations either don't have the level of detail needed, don't consistently track EV-specific incidents, or don't capture the nuances of how these fires happen and why they happen. It's a perfect example of how fragmented and unreliable the information is when it comes to electric vehicle fires. The NISTA data, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, it has specific limitations when it comes to understanding EV fires. The Fatality Analysis Reporting System only includes fatal crashes, excluding fires unrelated to crashes and lacks information about fire sources. VIN data may not consistently indicate fuel type. The compliant database, while potentially useful for identifying systematic issues, relies entirely on self-reported information from consumers and manufacturers, making it unrepresentative and less likely to capture post-crash issues. Additionally, the Manufacturer Communication Database search tool is not user-friendly, making it difficult to identify EV battery fire cases. The database for the Highway Loss Data Institute includes non-crash fire claims under comprehensive coverage, which ensures against theft and non-crash physical damage to vehicles. However, the data lacks details about the causes or sources of these fires. The data does suggest that electric vehicles have higher non-crash fire claim frequency, severity, and losses compared to all passenger cars. It's impossible to determine whether these differences are related to the fuel source without detailed information. This lack of context makes it difficult to draw meaningful conclusions. The U.S. Fire Administration's National Fire Reporting System, NFERS, has significant limitations as a data source for analyzing vehicle fires. It is not really comprehensive and lacks a representative sample because not all states or fire departments participate consistently or fully report incidents. This thing was designed in the 70s. Many fields related to vehicles are optional, and they're often left blank. This leads to incomplete records. Unlike the NISTA database, NFERS does not have the ability to decode VIN data, making it really challenging to identify the fuel type or battery types of these vehicles involved in the fires. On top of all of that, when we put the data into NFERS, I have no way to classify the involvement of the high voltage battery. Was it a cabin fire that extended to the battery? Was it a battery fire? Was it a garage fire that caught the vehicle on fire? These are all things that we need to understand, and the lack of tracking severely limits its usefulness for studying electric vehicle fires. The National Fire Protection Association, NFPA, it does not collect detailed information about fire causes. This limits its ability to analyze vehicle fire incidents. When you look at systems like NFERS, they do include fields for vehicle make, model, year, VIN, and they look at all that for vehicle fires, but the NFPA has chosen not to analyze this data. Their staff cited concerns that these fields are voluntary and often left incomplete, and there is a perception that VINs could be considered personal identifying information. 
The towing traffic incident reporting system is focused on capturing incidents where towers are struck on the roadway. It does not include any details about the vehicle involved, and it's unable to provide any insights into vehicle-specific incidents. The database is not even designed to track safety events that occur in towing yards, a place where we typically see thermal runaway events after a significant crash days or weeks after that significant crash. This further limits its relevance for studying electric vehicle fires or any other vehicle-related safety event. So what studies are out there? Many people reference a 2022 study from Sweden that reports 24 fires involving electric vehicles. At first glance, this might seem like valuable data, but let's put it into perspective. How many EVs were actually on the road in Sweden? In 2022, there were about 160,000 electric vehicles in the entire country, most of which were only a few years old. To add further context, Sweden is comparable to the state of New Jersey in both population and the number of vehicles on the road. This small sample size combined with the relative youth of these vehicles makes it nearly impossible to draw any meaningful conclusion about the long-term fire risks of EVs. Larger scale studies with more diverse data, that's what's needed to truly understand the scope of this issue. Oftentimes, you'll hear claims that internal combustion engine vehicles, they catch fire 20 times more than their EV counterparts. However, data from South Korea paints a different picture. While EVs do have fewer fires overall, the numbers are much closer. About 1.3 fires per 10,000 vehicles for EVs compared to 1.9 fires for ICE vehicles. While this suggests a slightly lower fire rate for EVs, the numbers of EV fires, they're steadily increasing. In 2021, South Korea reported just 24 EV fires, but by 2023, that number had jumped to 72. This is driven largely by the growing number of EVs on the road, and I suspect as the EV fleet ages, we're going to see even more incidents. One of the best sources of information we have on EV fires is from EV FireSafe, a research organization funded by the Australian Department of Defense. To understand their data, you have to look at their methodology. They're scraping media reports and investigating incidents across the globe with an option for individuals to report fires directly to them. While they do an excellent job gathering data, it's simply not possible to account for every EV fire using this approach. On top of that, when a Tesla catches on fire, it tends to dominate the headlines, while other EVs don't get any attention. One thing I'd love to see from them is a breakdown of the age of the vehicles involved in these fires. From what I've noticed, EV fires often happen to vehicles that are still practically new, unlike typical vehicle fires that the fire service encounters. Those vehicles are typically older, they're poorly maintained, often 10 to 15 years old. While I appreciate EV FireSafe's efforts, there's one thing I find troubling. On their website, they state, Consent is not given to social media influencers, right-wing organizations, or anyone interested in taking our work out of context for the purpose of pushing an anti-EV agenda or making money from clickbait. I agree that fire safety research should not be politicized or used to push an agenda, but this raises questions. Why restrict one side while allowing the other side to skew the data? Their work is often cited with statements like, there have only been 511 EV fires since 2010. But that's not accurate by any means. Fire safety is a universal issue, and the focus should be on transparency, accuracy, not politics. With that said, I'd love to see EV FireSafe open up their database and make it open source. This channel is about fire safety and understanding the risks associated with new technologies like electric vehicles. There are aspects of EVs that I really like, and there are aspects that I'm not a fan of. Ultimately, driving an electric vehicle, it just doesn't fit my lifestyle. At the end of the day, what we really need is good data. A country the size of the U.S. is in a prime position to collect it. And thankfully, we're taking steps in the right direction. In 2026, we'll switch to the National Emergency Response Incident System, NERIS, which is designed to collect the kinds of data, the kinds of detail we need to truly understand the fire risks associated with EVs. And having accurate data is key to understanding the risks, or even confirming if there's really an issue at all. If we find that fires are more common in newer vehicles, it could guide manufacturers in making design changes to address those challenges early. Or maybe we'll learn that certain battery cell types are more prone to failure, which would be a big step in improving safety across the industry. Right now, we just don't know, and that's why collecting this data is so important.